Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crowdfunded crewed space rocket, Spica. The day is November 30th and it's time for some rocket updates. We will also reveal the right answer to our last week's mystery part at the end of the video. But to start with we had Bianca finishing the many of the last welds for the streaming accessory rack she started building a couple of weeks ago. All the shelves are now welded in place and the whole thing is looking quite nicely. If you watched our previous video on Sunday you've already seen that we did a few initial 1 tenth scale space capsules splashdown tests in preparation for more accurate testing in the near future. The link to that video is going to be in the description box below if you haven't watched it. And while that was taking place, Thomas was doing some grinding in the background processing some of the outside support pillars for Spica's upcoming propellant tank bulkheads. These flat panels will be bent into essentially three-sided square pipes to connect the bulkheads to the intertank connecting side skirts for overall structural integrity. And just in between Bianca and Thomas, we had Christian busy welding the new swirl injector solar retort that will need to make 38 perfect solder joints in one attempt in a hot nitrogen environment. We'll use it to make four different swirl injector blocks for the upcoming validation test on our flown BPM-5 rocket engine. Meanwhile, Adrian was happy to be working on a cold gas thruster system, not needing to worry about any injectors and just focusing on manufacturing nozzles. He made a few control pieces with the same throat size and expansion ratios, which he will use as reference points for future thrust measurements. He then checked his manufacturing tolerances by measuring their throat and nozzle lengths and diameters under a microscope. I mean, just take a look at those tiny throats. Lastly, our second lathe was used for making an adapter for another type of nozzle. You might remember we are planning to use a liquid nitrogen burner for Spica's pressure regulation in flight, and for that we can use some off-the-shelf oil burner nozzles, since the heat exchanger will be fired by a very fuel-rich burner with fairly low combustion temperatures. We received a couple of these nozzles and wanted to run them through a water flow test to measure their flow rates, for which we made a nozzle adapter to fit our small water flow test stand. And I guess that leads us nicely to the correct answer of last week's mystery part. This is 70 meters of tubing comprising one of two heat exchangers for the liquid nitrogen evaporator, masterfully welded in-house by Meinken. We had many good attempts at guessing what this was last week and many right ones as well, but the first person to guess it correctly was Rasmus, so we will be getting in touch with you to send you a Dexo 2 poster. And if you are sad you didn't want to post it yourself, we do have some over at our web shop which are currently 50% off when using the code LASTCHANCESAS at checkout. If you care, the link to the web store is in the video description box. But that is all for now, so as always thank you for watching, supporting and subscribing, and we'll see you next time when we are one step closer to space. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non profit all volunteer project. The reason we are getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsub.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return, you get all these insider videos on building a space program which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.